Today we're going to talk about how our minds work and how to train your brain to produce the results that you say that you want, but you never seem to achieve. In this coaching, I walk you through why who you are right now is the sum total of the thoughts that are always playing in your head. So who are you right now? Are you stressed out? Are you overweight? Do you live in fear most of the time? In this training, we go over what your thought patterns are, how to master them, and achieve your desired outcomes. For those of you who don't know me, let me introduce myself. My name is Kelsey Matheson, and I'm an international entrepreneur, a success coach for women, and a speaker. And I own a number of businesses. I travel a lot uh, for business and for pleasure. And like all of us, I live a hectic lifestyle. So training my brain to help me with everything that I've achieved and everything that I want to accomplish, whether they're big goals or little goals, is really important to me. And I believe we all have things that we want to accomplish in life. But it's so easy for us to get in our own way. So that's why I'm super excited about this coaching today. So unless we're already working together directly, then I don't have the opportunity yet of knowing you personally. But the person who knows you the best, inside and out, is you. What I do know is that because you are watching this, you obviously have a desire for personal development. You have a desire for wanting more in your life or enhancing your life in some way. Otherwise, you wouldn't be watching this. Who you are right now is the total of the thoughts that are constantly playing in your head. So who are you? Are you a bit blue? Are you unhappy with your body? Are you not making the kind of money that you want to be making? Do you have the energy that you want to have? Your thought patterns are directly linked to your circumstances. So if you want to get the most out of this coaching, then I want you to grab a journal or a piece of paper or something to write with because typing notes on your computer is not as powerful. And the reason is, is I need you to be physically engaged as we go through this and typing doesn't quite work your brain the same way as writing all this down. So at the top of your page, I want you to write this down, mind, spirit, and body. Now I know most of us are used to hearing mind, body, and spirit, but today the order we need to pay attention to is mind, spirit, and body. Now write down the answers to the question I just asked you. Where are you right now? You may be feeling a bit down or lonely. You may be feeling overwhelmed or stressed out or unhealthy or not present and grounded. So I want you to write down the answers to where you are right now. Our situation is the way that it is because of our thought patterns, but so much of what is happening in our minds, we're just not aware of. So some things we're very much aware of, so for example, you've tried a food in the past that you absolutely hate, and then you see that food or you're offered that food and you have an automatic emotional response followed by a physical response. That's mind, spirit, body. So for example, I've spent a lot of time in Japan and when I tried sea urchin or uni for the first time, I was at a seaside sushi stand where you walk up to the counter and you order whatever it is, you know, whatever you want. And they make it right there in front of you and you grab the piece of sushi and you eat it as you're standing there at this, at this tall counter. And then you order the next piece of sushi that you want. So I had never tried uni before, but I was in my early 20s and I was, I was up for trying almost anything back then. You know, I was pretty adventurous um, when it came to trying new foods. I guess I still am. And I put the uni sushi into my mouth and I instantly tasted something to me that was incredibly offensive. I mean, it was the most disgusting taste that had ever hit my mouth. It was that, it was so awful, but I had nowhere to put it because I didn't, I didn't have a plate. I didn't even have a napkin. I couldn't really spit it onto the floor because there was a bunch of people standing around me. And I was just too embarrassed as a 22 year old worried about offending someone if I spit it into my hand. And I, I just, I just kind of felt trapped and I instantly started to sweat and I was trying not to gag as I chewed it, but I had to chew it because it was too big to just swallow down. It, it felt like an eternity, even though it probably was only a couple seconds of just being tortured with this disgusting taste I had to endure. And then finally, finally I swallowed it and it took everything, it took all of my strength that I could muster, but I managed to swallow it. Now, it may have been a bad piece of uni. I mean, I don't know. I didn't get food poisoning or, you know, I didn't get ups an upset stomach or anything like that. And, and there have been many times now um, afterwards that where people have encouraged me to try it again because, you know, so many people do enjoy it. And I've almost tried it because I don't understand how anyone could eat what I experienced at that seaside restaurant. So I've thought to myself, well, maybe I did have like a bad piece, you know, and I should give it another try. But just the thought of it, right, my mind gives me an immediate feeling, right? An immediate emotion, which is spirit. 
and then my body just refuses and I even like, ugh, I just shudder to think of it, right? Which is body. Again, mind, spirit, and body. So that's a thought pattern that's pretty obvious, right? That mind, spirit, and body relationship is very clear. But we all have patterns about money, about our relationships, about our body image, our intelligence, our self-worth that are just as powerful but we're not as aware of them because they're they're playing over and over and over and over in our heads all the time. You know when you have a sound in your house that is constant or happens all the time and you no longer register it, but you know, say you have guests over and they can hear it and they're like, oh, what's that noise? And you listen for it and when, you, when it registers, you're like, oh yeah, that's just the humidifier. But it takes you a second because even you don't notice it anymore. Our subconscious mind is 90% more powerful than our conscious mind. The universe or God or the divine or source, depending on your beliefs, has given us a profound and priceless gift that is the ability to change our path at any moment and change our lives. So we literally have the ability to shape our situation and our environment. We have something in our brains called the reticular activation system. Okay, it's a small part of the brain that is very important in regards to goal setting, attention, and keeping us alive. So even though it's, it's, it's a small part of the brain, it's pretty important. So it's, a, it's responsible for filtering the mass amounts of information your sensory organs, which is your, your eyes, ears, tongue, skin, and nose, are constantly taking in. And our reticular activation system selects the info that is the most important for our conscious mind to pay attention to. So here's an exercise that we can all do right now. Let's take 10 seconds, even we'll close our eyes. Let's take 10 seconds and listen to every sound around you that you can, that you can perceive. Okay, so close your eyes and let's do 10 seconds. You probably weren't paying attention to probably 99% of those sounds a few moments ago. But that, and much more when you consider your other sensory organs, is what you miss on a regular basis, just like the sound of that humidifier, right? This is because your reticular activating system, or your RAS, decides what is important and what can be safely ignored. So when your RAS distinguishes information as important, then you pay attention to it. So inherently, you'll see things and you'll notice things that are related to the information more often. So for example, if you have, have you had the experience where you buy a new car and then all of a sudden you start seeing the same car everywhere? You're like, oh, my, our neighbors have one and it's all over the streets. And you even notice it, one is on you know, one of your favorite TV shows. With our vehicle that we have, our daughter notices others like it everywhere. She'll say, hey, look, it's our truck. Or mama, look, it's our truck, but it's in a different color. And it's the only vehicle that she's ever remembered having, and it's also a fairly unique vehicle. So her reticular activation system has distinguished it as an important thing for her. So here's another example. You decide you want to, uh, you want to travel to a certain area, or I don't know, um, you want to start building model trains, for example. And then all of a sudden, you see books on the subject everywhere, or you notice television shows, or people are talking about it in conversations at the water cooler. It's not that those things didn't exist before, but your RIS wasn't looking for it. It just wasn't important. What we want to do is train your reticular activating system to support you in achieving your goals. So here's your exercise. For five to 10 minutes a day, set a timer and write in a journal everything that you have ever achieved. So let me warn you, you're gonna run out of stuff really quickly. You're gonna write down that you graduated from high school, that you graduated from college, that you got married, or you, you left a relationship that wasn't serving you, that you, you bought a house, or you started a business, or you achieved a certain level in your career. And then you're gonna run out of things to write down, but the timer will still be ticking. So don't stop. Just let your brain start searching for other things. And you'll start thinking, okay, well, what, what else is there? Like, well, I organized my closet last month and that felt good. And, you know, I brushed my teeth this morning and my hair and moms will know that small, moms with small kids will know that tasks like that are definitely achievements. You can write down that you got the kids to school, you washed the car, you talked to a good friend who needed support, and you'll start thinking about all the little achievements in your life. The idea here is we want to start training our brain to start looking for what is great in your life, everything that you've achieved, because your RAS 
will start looking for more of those achievements and start recognizing them. And it, it sounds so simple, and it is, but it's also such a powerful conditioning exercise because after that timer goes off and you finish the exercise, your brain will continue to look. So the consequences of not appreciating yourself and, and not recognizing that you're already successful, that you've, you've already achieved so much, has led you to where you are right now. You need to celebrate yourself. And so when we recognize your accomplishment, your mind, you start to feel better about yourself and your brain starts to motivate you, which is your spirit. And then that triggers you into acting upon what you need to do in order to achieve your goals, which is your body. How many times have you tried to achieve something like losing some weight or exercising more, um, eating better, or even something like writing a book? And at first you're really gung-ho and you're ready to go and excited and motivated, and then eventually you lose steam, your focus shifts, and you get off track. And then what do most of us do? We beat ourselves up. We say, oh, you know what? I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with me. I just can't see anything through. I can't stick to working towards my goals. I just, you know, I have a problem with that. It must be me. Internally, that's what's going on. You know, that's what we tell ourselves. Externally, many of us will come up with a million, million excuses of why we didn't achieve what we wanted to. But those excuses are to cover up the guilt and the shame, the embarrassment we feel because we think we failed. So let me share a story with you about my daughter. This past summer, she learned to tie her own shoes and my mom was staying with us and she decided she was going to help to help to teach my daughter how to tie her own shoes. And so one day I came home from a business trip and they, they met me at the door and welcomed me home. And my daughter says, Mama, I have something to show you. And she grabbed one of her shoes that have the laces on the top. It has the zipper along the side. But instead of unzipping the zipper to put the shoes on, the laces were already loose because she had been practicing. And so she slipped the shoe on. So then I watch her as she painstakingly held the two laces in her tiny little hands and crossed one over the other and tried to slip it through a few times until she got it. And then she tried to make a loop with the other one while trying to hold it all together with her little fingers. And, she, you know, things kept falling out between her fingers, but she eventually got it. And then she pulled the two laces together and she proudly presented her shoe tied up in a bow. <laughs> now, do you think it looked like a perfectly tied shoe? No, not even close. Do you think that I looked at her and went, well, honey, you know, you didn't really do a very good job. It doesn't look that great, but you know, nice try. No, of course not. I got excited and I gave her a big hug and I told her how proud I was and I gave her a high five and a fist bump and I told her what she did was amazing and that she was amazing. And how do you think that wired her brain? Do you think that it motivated her to keep trying, to keep at it? Absolutely. Did it make her feel good about trying something new, even if she was a bit unsure and she was still trying to figure it all out? Of course. And then after that day, I would notice that she would watch me really closely when I tied my shoes, or she'd notice other kids wearing shoes with laces, and she would say, hey, mom, I could have shoes like that now because I can tie my own shoes. Her reticular activating system was picking up everything that had to do with this new skill she learned, and was still, and she was still trying to figure out how to do it, but it was distinguishing that that information was very important to her during that time. We celebrate our kids' achievements, we celebrate our friends' and our loved ones' achievements, and now it's time to celebrate yours every single day. So do this exercise every day for two weeks and see the shift in how you feel. See how your brain starts to recognize your greatness. Witness how you start celebrating your milestones, even if it's something simple. And notice how you feel about trying something new compared to how you would have felt before. So when I work with my clients, I make it a requirement that they celebrate their achievements, big and small, every step of the way. And personally, I think it's more important to celebrate the little ones that normally don't get the attention because that's where the real shifts in training your brain can happen. So do this exercise for two weeks and then come back to me. Come back and, you know, comment below and let me know what's shifted for you. Or, you know, maybe you'll recognize some changes in your self-esteem, you know, or based on what you wrote down today about where you are, what's improved for you. Thank you so much for being here today. You know, I believe we are all on this planet for a reason, and I believe we all have a life's purpose, whether or not we realize it yet. We, we are all so incredibly powerful to create the lives that we want. And when we take a step back and recognize what is serving us and what isn't, 
we're in a much better place to make conscious decisions and work towards creating the life that we're meant to live. So make your day incredible and thank you for being here. We'll see you soon. Ciao for now.